Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Lucy Porter. We start with, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Lucy, which category would you like? Sport. Sport. Well, <laughs> it's a week Your category is sport. The answer is nine. What is the question? Is it how many people had heard of Yingling before we won a medal in it? <laughs> is it? Is it how might a German text the word no? <laughs> <laughs> What is the average number of fingers in Norfolk? <laughs> is it how many toes has Serrano finds left in the Antarctic? <laughs> is it how many dwarfs were originally in Snow White before political correctness forced the removal of Poofy and Rapey? <laughs> uh, is it at what age did my imaginary friend set fire to the kitchen? <laughs> Is it how many weeks is Peaches Gailed Off Marriage going to last? All that stuff, Rapey the Dwarf, it's just <laughs> good, clean <laughs> fun, is it? That was the weirdest reaction of all. Steady oh, on. Yeah. Now, Peter, yeah. don't, don't mock yeah. our Queen of Hearts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she's a national treasure. She's done so much for us. <laughs> <laughs> how many bullets would I need to correctly judge an episode of Britain's Got Talent? <laughs> How many medals has Ireland ever won in the course of its entire history? That's <laughs> not fair, is it? Whoa, whoa, one thing, right. A, A, one, wrong. <laughs> B, currently we win all of ours in boxing. So probably best if you don't royal the Irish man, right? <laughs> yeah, well, what may... are you going to do? Sail away from me while I'm chasing. <laughs> Was it how many medals did Britain win in a day last weekend? Yes, that's absolutely right. The day was Saturday. Well done. Very good. <laughs> the question I was looking for is how many medals did Great Britain's Olympic team win on Saturday? The hall of four golds, one silver and four bronze medals is the country's best return for a single day at the Olympics since 1908. What are they successful at, though? Rowing? How typical of Britain to excel at a sport where you go backwards? <laughs> Even that quickly, because people just cycle along beside the rowers, just normal people, to show how slow yeah, they're going in real time. They don't cycle alongside as quickly as other British people would cycle alongside, <laughs> do they? If you just got every cyclist to hold a piece of scenery, it would look like nobody was moving at all. <laughs> do you know, there was an Australian coach who said that he, he just said, you know, these medals are worth nothing because the Brit Britain only wins medals at the sitting down sports. And you think, well, just because, you know, swimming, that's fair. But at least we win at sports in which a human is best. If you're really good at swimming, you're always going to get beaten by a fish, right? <laughs> if you're good at running, that's you're always going to get beaten though. by a cheetah. But you try putting a bloody pilchard on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're suggesting... Only humans can win at the sports that we do well in. So hang on a minute. So you're suggesting after Phelps had won his eighth gold medal, we should yeah. have released a shark and gone, beat that. <laughs> <laughs> is that... We'll, get, we'll give you a head start as well. Go on. I really like that Rebecca Adlington. She's so normal. It's fantastic. She looks like she could work at Greg's. Do you know what I mean? That's what you can do. I've got to go bloody fast. I've left pasties in the oven. You know, she has that <laughs> genuine... Do you know the thing about her? She, she won't swim in the sea. She's going on holiday, but she's not going to swim in the sea. Have you tested she's not her? Yeah. She won't <laughs> swim in the sea because she's scared of it, because she knows a shark is faster <laughs> than she is. <laughs> Weird. Who wants to swim that much? I mean, if your daughter says to you, yeah, I want to go swimming, OK, take her to the beach, take her for a swim. If she says, <laughs> I want to go swimming at six in the morning and then for a further four hours after school every day, <laughs> say, no, go up the park, drink some cider and have some disappointing sex. <laughs> what I don't quite understand with the swimming, though, is, you know, they have that green line that yeah. goes along the pool. Yeah. Why doesn't somebody grab hold of that? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I love the way whenever the swimming is on, there's big discussion about the fact that, you know, you don't have any 50-meter pools, right? As if, you know, if you don't train in a 50-meter pool, like, you'll get to 25 meters and then just naturally turn around <laughs> and swim back again. <laughs> British people do train in rubbish pools, though, Dara. That's what we should do in the London Olympics, to even things up. We should make it more like a British pool. Let's see if Phelps can win if he's got to get past a fat guy doing breads. <laughs> and then tread water so he doesn't swim up an old woman's colon. <laughs> do, you know, do you know, I think Phelps ruined the swimming. He was just too good. It wasn't, it wasn't a competition anymore. I think for the London Olympics, we should have an event where it's just him swimming up and down the pool while Michael Barrymore tries to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 best thing about, the best thing about Phelps is that... Well, not the best thing, he's an eight-time uh, Olympian gold winner, but he's, he's got ADHD. <laughs> How tempted would you be if you were just swimming with him just before the race starts, just to get out like a tinfoil man and go, shiny, shiny, yeah. and just sit over there? <laughs> sort of like that, you know? <laughs> I mean, technically, that's abuse, but you'd win. <laughs> I'm, I'm mixing with OCD, sorry, because then yeah. you could just go, just on the blocks, go, you left your locker open. <laughs> oh, God! Uh... <laughs> the event that I love in the cycling, of all of them, is the Kirin, which is the fantastic, what? which is that one Kirin. which looks like... It's essentially, it's four men in Lycra chasing a pizza delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> On a little mo how, did they, how did that ever become a sport? I but, don't understand. Well, that. It's, it's very the... important that there have to be thousands and thousands of very slightly different sorts of cycling, because otherwise we wouldn't be anywhere on the medal stable. <laughs> there was just one gold for cycling. We'd, you know, we'd have about four medals. They're not useless. even that different. It's like, be... like, people would win eight medals in the archery if you had an event where you just did the archery again wearing a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what we need to be thinking about for 2012. <laughs> 50 different sorts of darts. <laughs> uh, so those in the swimming, though, they said that Michael Phelps is perfectly designed for swimming, which is bollocks. If he was, he'd have a fin, <laughs> he'd have gills. That is why sharks <laughs> are faster. <laughs> Here's the weird thing. Some of the events, some of the events have different weight categories. Boxing, obviously. Weightlifting has different weight categories. And some of them are absolute. Rowing has different weight categories as well. But others don't. Like sprinting doesn't sprinting, have sprint. fat bloke sprint. It doesn't have <laughs> the 100 metres for guys over 25 stone. Just running, <laughs> trying to keep themselves within the lane. Just trying to... <laughs> just chaffing off each other as they ran. <laughs> Which Britain didn't do so well. Oh, Paula Radcliffe. Oh, Paula Radcliffe, man. She yeah. struggled. I think if Paula Radcliffe is watching, you know, I mean, take, take comfort. I mean, it's not all bad. If you were a horse, you would have been shot by now. <laughs> <laughs> she did really badly in the marathon, and what was particularly galling was that at the finish line, she was pipped by a guy in a gorilla costume. <laughs> <laughs> What was great about it, did you see the footage? You know when she stopped halfway through the marathon? Just seeing the spectators go, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh, no, she's stretching. Yeah, yeah, good for you, yeah. It was one of the finest pieces of, uh, of commentary. I think it was Steve Cram. He said, well, Paul is out an important lesson. There are no shortcuts in the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Was that uh, what she was looking for, was it? Whole, uh, wait a minute. Career. Finishing lines over there. <laughs> I'm going through here. Uh. <laughs> That'd be great, just a tiny man in a hat. This way, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one part of Michael Phelps' lifestyle that we can all... We could all do. Hey, Ooh, loads, the eating. Yeah. The eating. The eating. The 12,000 calories. Obviously, yeah. I know so many teenagers who are yeah. on that diet already. Why aren't they in the Olympics? Because oh, yeah. <laughs> he only eats plankton. <laughs> <laughs> Like Usain Bolt, though, wasn't it? Usain Bolt was asked what was his preparation before oh, the 100 amazing. meters, and he said, I got up, ate some nuggets, went back to sleep, got up, ate some more nuggets, and went to the stadium. See, up until that last bit, that's my life. Yeah. That's my life in a nutshell. <laughs> and then came down to the track. I don't normally do that bit, but, but to that bit, I'm what? living the Usain Bolt dream at that stage. I thought Bolt was amazing. That I was mean, great. winning, beating the world record, and slowing down at the end. How galling has that got to be for the other athletes? It could have only been more galling if he'd got out his camera phone and gone, <laughs> hurry up, everybody, I want to try and get us all in this. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> totally. In, in 2012, he should just dress up as a snail. <laughs> just be sad, yeah. Still gonna win. <laughs> Loser! I've never managed to do anything in 9.69 <laughs> seconds. It took me 10 seconds to watch him. <laughs> 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 Did you see, though, the Liu Shang? He was the Chinese herd. Chinese rat. great hope, yes. Yeah? <laughs> well, apparently the tickets have been going for £3,000 to watch him, right? Now, if you'd bought that ticket, you'd have been a bit pissed off, wouldn't you? If all you got was seeing him come into the stadium, seeing him have a full start, pull up, flex his ankle and piss off. <laughs> you'd have probably thought that wasn't the best £3,000 you'd ever spent. <laughs> yeah, well, so... that's capitalism for you. They're better getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie, Hugh and Lucy. <laughs> now we play a round called Chariots of News. This game involves Lucy, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner of the team I judge should produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is leisure. Who wants to come in on that? <coughs> Lucy Mortar. <laughs> um, le I was thinking leisure, leisure breaks are quite popular, aren't they? The leisure break, the mini break. But if you think about it, right, say if you ask a woman you know, how was your weekend? And she says, oh, my weekend, actually, you know that bloke Steve I've been telling you about? Well, I came out of work on Friday. Steve was waiting for me. He bundled me into the back of a taxi. He whisked me off to Paris. He locked me in a hotel room. He plied me with champagne. And he made love to me all weekend, right? Then you go, oh, that's nice, don't you? Whereas, if you ask how her weekend was, and she says, well, you know that bloke Steve I was telling you about? I came out of work on Friday. Steve was waiting for me. Bundled me into the back of a van. <laughs> drove, me, drove me to Watford, locked me in his bedroom, forced fed me row hypnol and had sex with me all weekend. <laughs> right? Then you'd probably go, oh no, poor you, wouldn't you? But my point is that the difference there is mainly budget, isn't it? <laughs> well done, Lucy. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is technology. Who wants to come in? Andy Parsons. <laughs> now, I saw a BP station with a wind turbine on the top of it last week. <laughs> They're taking the piss, aren't they? <laughs> what statement are they possibly trying to convey? <laughs> oh, don't worry, fill up with as much petrol as you like. Our cash register is powered by the wind. <laughs> We have also had stories in the tabloids, haven't we, about people having problems with their sat-nav, which has taken them on to a railway line. <laughs> now, it's a gadget. You are supposed to also use your brain. <laughs> if you've got a European sat-nav and you want to go to France, it will maybe direct you across the channel. <laughs> but it expects you to get on a ferry... <laughs> 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 Well done, Andy Parsons. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Frankie and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. OK, the next topic is animals. <laughs> Frankie boy. <laughs> you heard this thing that the human female has exactly the same pheromone scent as an orangutan female? <laughs> it was news to me. I'll never wear a blindfold again. <laughs> they told me she was a Geordie. Incidentally, there are only two ways to have sex with an orangutan. <laughs> Carefully... <laughs> ..and every which way but loose. <laughs> I hate pets. People with pets. Having a pet is just basically saying, I have tried to find love among my own species. <laughs> is there anything sadder than seeing someone with a dog picking up dog shit? <laughs> I suppose maybe someone without a dog. <laughs> I don't know how long I could be a vet before I got bored and started shagging stuff. <laughs> I'd, I'd shag an owl. Because whatever position you took it from, you could always get eye contact. <laughs> or shag a kitten. You know, could you imagine having sex with something that you actually wanted to cuddle afterwards? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Frankie Dare addressing the topic of animals. <laughs> Russell, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. British society. Thanks. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of idiots about, aren't there? I was in a sauna the other day with some men, which, you know, let's forget about that part of the story, but... <laughs> but there was this bloke who was just sat there going, I tell you, this country's gone to the dogs. Five years' time, guarantee it. This country, Sharia law. Everywhere you look, Sharia law. And his mate went, yeah, but the thing is, right, under that law, you can have four wives. And this bloke, this bloke suddenly went, really? And you're like... <laughs> Make your mind up, mate. You Sid James or Enoch Powell. They're everywhere, titties. Ha ha. He went mental. <laughs> Four wives. Imagine the fun I'd have. One for every day of the week. <laughs> it's wonderful when you see bigotry slapped, isn't it? I was on, the, on a train the other day. There was a bloke sat here, let's call him a dick, who was sat opposite a man of foreign persuasion, just go, why don't you go home, mate? Why don't you go home? And this hero looked back at this bloke and went, I am. That's why I'm on the train. <laughs> Well done, Russell. <laughs> Points there go to Russell and Andy. <laughs> Our next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of Conservative leader David Cameron on his way to work. But what does CSBS stand for? Come a speeding bus soon. <laughs> Is it concealed snipers begin shitting? <laughs> I know what it is. It's condom salesmen bring supplies. <laughs> Cameron stimulated by speed bumps. There's something about broken society, I think. Yes, it Ooh. is, but yeah, the BS is Cameron does something to broken society. Cameron Same. sellotapes broken no. society. <laughs> Shags. Slams. Support. Slates. Slams. 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 Support. Slams. Slams. I'll give you slam. Yeah. Well done. Very slams. good. Yes, Cameron slams broken society. Well done. The answer I was looking for was Cameron slams broken society. This is the news that David Cameron has vowed to be as radical a social reformer as Margaret Thatcher was an economic reformer. The revelation comes in a newly published book in which he pledges to heal what he called Britain's broken society. I don't think he's going to mend our broken society by slamming it. I think that's, it's a sort of old television approach to mending a thing, isn't it? <laughs> slam the broken society and it will mend it. Well, no, just don't go... slam it, be careful with it. <laughs> Get someone to mend it, no, someone no. who knows what they're doing. No, uh, what frightening experience, by the way, did ah. Cameron... We well, were... this was, he was in a, he was, had a white van man follow him on his bicycle. And, did you and it scared him. And he said that what was really frightening about it was that the white van kept on stopping and starting. Those were traffic lights, Dave. <laughs> you were meant to stop as well. Well, didn't the guy, didn't the guy try to run him off the road? And yeah. I think it's quite sad, actually, because of all the crimes that I'd like to see happen to David Cameron, that's one of the least funny. <laughs> I'd much rather see him happy slapped by an enormous transsexual. <laughs> I got run over by a white van man in, on my... At least he pulled out of a turning. I hit the side of him and I flew over his bonnet were you on a, the, so you were in a bike? I was on a push bike, time. yeah. Oh, and I so. flew past the windscreen. And driving this van were two Chinese men. And as I flew past, like, just, you know, sort of coming through, I looked at them, and there was absolutely no reaction on their faces. <laughs> 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 and as I flew through, I thought, is this because they're Chinese? Are there a lot of bicycle accidents in China? <laughs> what do you mean, Do you think they drove history? off going, wasn't that the blog from my hero? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can fly in that job. Yeah. He can fly in real life too. Yeah. I first became aware of him in the Mary Whitehouse experience. <laughs> <laughs> did, we, did we have to do three he, people he, having he a crack at the accent? <laughs> he, he now, no, 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 he now does mock the week, but I don't like that because of racist like Chinese people. <laughs> Maybe they get points for all the yeah. Mary Whitehouse team and they're just driving around. <laughs> Next, it's back there. I'll pack <laughs> No, he was attacked by a man in a van, yeah. He, yeah. he said the guy kept... So I hope him. whoever's done that to David Cameron is proud of themselves. I mean, seriously, well done. <laughs> Cameron said, I'm not at all smug. It's yeah. not for him to say, is it? We'll be the fucking judge of how smug you are, you <laughs> smug shit. <laughs> You're like a mafia overlord, yeah, yeah, but, you know, well, honestly, I'm not smug and I'm not horrible and I'm not dishonest. Shut up, do things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
What did he recently distance himself from? Cameron's distanced himself from this mad report about the North that oh, yeah. said the North is terrible, everybody should leave it and move to the South, which is ridiculous because, as you know, in the North of England, you can leave your door open because there's nothing in your house worth nicking. <laughs> Nobody's going to want a tin bath and a VHS box set of Adam Sandler videos. <laughs> I think the North is underrated. I've done my research and a lot of people in the North have a kestrel. <laughs> <laughs> or a training to become a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> my favourite line, though, from the report was that... Uh, you people have a favourite line yeah, from yeah. a report? <laughs> Listen to this. Do you underline reports, like, with a marker pen I've and been stuff like that? <laughs> Mother, fetch the pen, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> um, my favourite line uh, from it, or a line that I enjoyed, was that one of the guys <laughs> said that people living in Bolton and Oldham had lost their raison d'etre. That is fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> As if, what is it? I've lost my raison d'etre. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you have it last? I've left it near me, Joy de Vivre. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> The reasoning, but because they've, they've said they more that they should uh, sort of everyone from the failing northern cities should move to places like Oxford and Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. Because Oxford and Cambridge are very nice, high employment, you know, pretty and everything. So that should be fine. That's perfect reasoning, isn't it? Except if everyone from Bolton rocks up at Oxford, it's not going to be as nice. <laughs> I've got nothing against people from Bolton. It's just the tens of thousands of homeless people arriving, saying, <laughs> we're here to become dons at the university, is that OK? <laughs> Do not going to work. Do you reckon people in Oxford, have they heard this news, were like, just, ugh, just throw away their yakult. Um, no, it's rubbish. <laughs> it's rubbish here. Hide the truffles. Take to the river. <laughs> yeah, quick, <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great if they're like that. They'll ruin Morse, they'll ruin Morse. Yeah. Lewis, <laughs> someone's ram raided Matalan. How was Cameron ruffled and pretend this week? Oh, the great thing is he went to Georgia. And the Georgians must be delighted to see Cameron rock up. <laughs> They're glad to have his support. That's like securing the support of both Chuckle Brothers <laughs> and Andy Townsend. <laughs> Oh, well, we should be sorted. Now, the Kremlin must have gone into hysterics just trying to find out who Cameron was on Google. <laughs> oh, apparently he's got an aga and his wife makes stationery. What shall we do? <laughs> when Cameron turned up, do you think the, the, the Georgian president was sort of going, is he, is he going to pay for what he eats when he's here? Is he, you know, <laughs> is this, his hotel, that's not on us, is it? Because this is just some guy. It does also, he was just some... And then he's, just he's elected, he is just some guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, he's just some nosy guy yeah. who wanted to have a look around. Oh, I like what you've done with the place. <laughs> I think a lot of people on both sides are now kind of a bit sorry that they took the Berlin Wall down. I think they're thinking that they should have just put patio doors in and see how things went. <laughs> It was good the way Georgia kicked off because Putin was at the Olympics. They thought it would be too busy. As if Putin doesn't have three dozen robot body doubles. <laughs> oh, you've met me before. Was my hair parted to the left? That was Vladimir Putin, 36. <laughs> but it didn't. It kicked off, didn't it? It kicked off between Georgian and Russian athletes, but it kicked off in the beach volleyball, the women's beach volleyball team, where the ones who started going at each other. Which... It is the one term, the one direct clash between Georgia and Russia in the Olympics was, it couldn't have been better, the women's beach volleyball. <laughs> Sweet. And Georgia won. Do you see when Bush had to meet the women's volleyball team and they wanted them to smack them on the bottom? Yeah. But he wouldn't do it. Do you think Bill Clinton would have missed that opportunity? <laughs> Bill Clinton would have had to have been brought up to the volleyball team tied up like Hannibal Lick. <laughs> 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 OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell, David and Andy! <laughs> team, team. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see in the performance come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Questions that were rejected from this year's exams. If the answer is nine, what is the question? <laughs> <laughs> when you finish this exam, please will you turn your paper over and mark it. <laughs> Using Darwin's theory of evolution, explain Boris Johnson. <laughs> Vladimir has 10,000 tanks and you have three. 
Why would you start a war? <laughs> Discuss. By the year 2015, the population of the Earth will have increased by 20%. How do we find Kerry Katona and stop her? <laughs> Complete the following sequence. 16, 35, 24, 8, 9. Now open the safe, grab the stuff and get in the getaway car. <laughs> <laughs> An object is travelling at 750 miles an hour, encounters resistance and slows to zero. For how many months will Richard Hammond have to wear nappies? <laughs> On the diagram below, show on the body where you like to be touched. <laughs> Describe Uranus without telling your parents. <laughs> Amy is 16. At least she said she was. How much <laughs> trouble are you in? <laughs> Complete this crop rotation. Wheat, fallow, rock festival, BNP rally. <laughs> Everybody in Class A is called Tom, Thomas or Tommy, and every second boy in Class B is called Tim, Timothy or Timmy. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a costume drama. Henry chewed her. But why did he chew her? <laughs> <laughs> The Zulus have us surrounded, sir. They're standing on the horizon, waving their spears. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those aren't spears. <laughs> Mr Darcy, I do believe you've poked me on Facebook. <laughs> so, King Henry, I'm your fifth wife. Hang on, divorce, beheaded, died, divorce, but... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> And for the latest news from the big house, tune in to Pride and Prejudice Extra, starting now on BBC <laughs> Three. <laughs> Next, Pride and Extreme Prejudice, <laughs> where Elizabeth is surprised to hear Mr Darcy's views on queers and Jews. <laughs> you think wearing this bustle makes my arse look big? <laughs> <laughs> Let me read the signal from the victory. Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> I worked for the Duke of Wellington when he invented the Wellington boot and the Earl of Sandwich when he invented the sandwich. But I suppose my happiest time was working for Lord Strapon. <laughs> <laughs> my liege, your desire to marry again will split the church. Does it have to be a gay Nigerian? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Duke! My daughter has been itching to meet you. Chlamydia! <laughs> the point at the end of that round. Go to Frankie, Hugh and Lucy! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Lucy Porter. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Well, the comedy is not just new, it's brand new. Next on BBC Two, kids with a footballing dream. But it's the dads who are living it for them, getting a bit too involved in the cup coming up. And then never mind the buzzcocks at 10.